should be working. Hello everyone, Nika here with your Daily Neuro Nugget. I want to apologize for missing yesterday's upload. I had a crazy drive in horrible weather, horrible roads from Minnesota, but it was kind of worth it because I got to shoot my weapons and it was fun despite it being negative 10 or so. Now I am back in downtown Chicago area with hot tea, rosebud tea. Have you guys ever had this? I'm not sure if you can see it. It's delicious, but there is black ice all over the road. So drive carefully if you are in the area. The last video I uploaded, I covered something I had seen on several news, main news channels, as in television, saying Koberger might be potentially tried four different times. Now, yes, it technically is unconstitutional. I know this, I know this, you don't have to remind me, but people in law enforcement often try to get away or do things that are unconstitutional. And one prime example is the case of the Roberts family in Idaho. I have talked about this in another video. It happened at the end of last year, I believe. Currently, there is a $50 million tort claim against the feds. Why? Because what they did is considered unconstitutional. Criminalizing homelessness is unconstitutional per the Eighth Amendment. So just because something is unconstitutional does not mean that law enforcement or lawyers or courts don't do these things or don't try to do these things. So it is essential that you keep your eyes peeled and that you understand your constitutional rights because as in the case of this family, their lawyer called it a pointlessly and wildly dangerous ruse. We're not gonna go into this too much. Again, I have another video where we covered this case already. I just wanted to remind you guys, I understand things are unconstitutional, but nonetheless, things that are unconstitutional still take place. So we will see where that case goes. Now, I have been putting off making this video, the cartel video, because let's face it, we all have our biases. But I figured, you know what, even if it's something I don't want to talk about, it it needs to be talked about because this is one of the most entertained theories that there was potentially cartel involvement. And when I first heard of that theory, I immediately just said, no, there's no way. Why? Because of my biases. And I've had indirect, maybe I shouldn't be saying this on your indirect, experiences with cartels that have traveled into small towns, mountainous regions, hidden regions in Mexico, and oftentimes crimes happen. And I happened to be in those areas several times. And you see how the cartel functions, how rapid they are, how they take care of crime. I understand that a lot of cartels have infiltrated the United States of America, but when you've seen this crime by the cartel happen firsthand and you're there to witness it, and then you were able to compare it to the Idaho Four as I've been able to, I don't think so. Why? First, I've never heard of a cartel going into a home, unaliving four people and leaving two people alive. I understand that a lot of us watch movies and shows like Ozark, which is a great show, I think, but it's a little bit different in real life. 
when they try to send a message, they do so by eliminating everyone. They're not going to leave any witnesses. Why there were two witnesses left in this home, we still don't know. So the second reason is that I don't think the cartel would use a cave bar. Maybe other things, maybe other weapons. To this day, we actually don't know what weapon was used, but per the PCA, they are insinuating that it was a K bar. So, if we're going to go with the PCA, I'm more of the opinion that the cartel would have used a quicker weapon, something larger could have had a sharp edge or even a gun. Now, cartel members, cartel crimes are often very rapid. They're very quick and they know what they're doing when it's something like this. They, they don't just go in there blindly. I don't think cartel members were in this 1122 King Road home before. So for them to just blindly enter this home without knowing the setup of the home, the layout where people stayed, having to go through every room and then still leaving two people alive, that's a different type of crime. So a stranger would not enter a home with five vehicles outside because you don't know what you're walking into. Which is why I've always believed that it was somebody who knew them, not somebody who was just stalking them. I mean, deeply knew them, deeply knew the setup of the house, the layout, knew where the victims slept, knew the ruse. Fourth reason why I don't think it was a cartel is again, if we are going to go with the affidavit assumption that it was a K bar, all you have to do is a quick search on the internet and you come up with so many images of fraternity members holding K bar knives. So that is something that needs to be considered. Number five, is that law enforcement originally said that this was a targeted attack and that there was no danger to the community. When, and if there was cartel involvement, I don't think LE would have came out and openly said that because why would they? LE is aware that cartel members are considered dangerous people. They wouldn't just say, oh, the cartel is here in Moscow, Idaho, but we don't have to worry about them. This was a one-time thing. I believe in my heart that LE has a better idea on who the person is because of the crime scene that they walked into. Again, we don't have a lot of details, but what if there were messages on the wall? Um, there have been rumors of things written on the wall with blood. We don't know. So we could assume that when Ellie walked in, they saw something immediately that said, this is targeted. And again, cartel we would still have to worry about that, right? Now, the crime scene, the autopsies, so much information missing. We don't really know the full extent. We don't know all the fine details about how the bodies were found. 
Were there multiple stab wounds? What was used? Were there other weapons used? We don't know. But cartel, from what I have seen, again, and all cartels are different, but very similar when it comes to committing um, these revenge type crimes, they often chop body parts. They detach heads, um, mutilate heavily, heavily. But if, for the PCA, if it was just stabs, stab wounds, I don't know. I would think it'd have to be somebody who knew them. This sounds like a hate crime, like a revenge crime, like someone was emotionally engaged with these four people. They were angry. We don't know if there were any heads detached. We have yet to see evidence of Again, the autopsies, we've yet to see any footage of the video of the bodies being removed from the home. So one can only speculate, one can only theorize. But I believe we would have heard if there would have been severe actual mutilation, actual decapitation, we probably would know by now. So again, I don't think it was the cartel. You guys wanted me to cover this theory. But that doesn't mean it couldn't have been drug involved because there are also other people who move illegal substances in Moscow, Idaho. And a lot of these people are independent dealers. And independent dealers often are not as stable, are not as cautious as cartel members. They go in there and they can be quite vicious. They can be looking for revenge. They don't care who they take out. Cartel members, I see them as a business. They're businessmen. They just want to move product and make money. They never have any emotional involvement when they're doing business. Independent dealers often do. They, they get carried away very easily. So that could still be a possibility. We can still theorize that. That is not off the table. But if I were to give a breakdown of who I thought committed the crime, it would be 1% cartel, 5% Brian Koberger, 25% Kopaka, and 69% someone who knew these four victims extremely well, was extremely close to them, knew where they slept, knew where they lived, knew their routine. So, Friday will be interesting. I am getting more and more excited to know what information will come up on Friday. So you guys stay tuned. Again, if you are in the area, stay warm, stay safe, and let me know. What do you think? Some people have said this is a PSYOP. Could also be. We see so many unconstitutional things happening all across the country. It does make one wonder, which is why I always tell you guys, remember to keep your eyes open and pay attention to everything that is going on in the world because once our rights get stripped, there's no getting them back. And that includes our right to a fair trial. So that's it for the day, guys. I gotta go. Job number two. I'm going to try to upload a very short video after this one for whoever wanted the hair recipe video. Um, I'm not going to create a new channel at the moment. It's time consuming. So I'll just upload it here. If you want to watch it, go watch it. If you don't want to watch it, you don't care. Don't watch it. Easy. So 
You guys have a wonderful evening and take care.